we start with your exams. Um, we will still have um, proper uh, sufficient feedback. I'm still um, I'm marking your um, assignments. Uh, so don't stress. Um, you get proper feedback. Um, I think it's going to be um, very impractical for us to provide individual feedback. Um, but the comments, obviously, that are made, um, I make sure that there are sufficient comments and feedback in your um, assignment. And obviously, we'll give you access to that once it's been um, um, been moderated. But um, I'll give general feedback in class um, as part of your exam preparation on both your formal test as well as your assignment to help you prepare. That's the that's the main purpose. Um, we will we should be finished with with everything tomorrow. It leaves us um, three periods next week, Thursday and Friday, to to do the final wrap up and do revision. Um, and I'm obviously going to um, to encourage you uh, um, to to go through the work um, and and if you have not by now highlighted certain concepts and aspects and certain chapters that you are um, find maybe we should spend more time on and or will revisit it as part of the revision we'll do that um, so please guide me to um, do ensure that you get a um, you get proper um, preparation for your exam um, as I've said previously, and uh, I, we have also identified that it is very important in marketing as well. If you, if the customer doesn't tell you something is wrong, then you know what, what you don't know what to fix. <laughs> so if you um, have certain issues, uh, please share and, and tell us, um, and uh, we'll we'll address it. Um, anybody at this stage, any contributions? Apart from hi, good mo uh, morning, and um, welcome to the rest of the class. Yes. Sir. I have a question. Um, of course. I would like to just find out. So I went onto Canvas uh, the other day and I noticed that one of our marks that was there is now being put up as missing. So, mm -hmm. so far, so we had a test out of the 45, which is the one that was completely missing. We never received those marks. Then we mm -hmm. had a test out of 30, which yes. we did receive marks for and it was showing. It's just a class test. Yeah, so, and then we had one out of 20. So the one out of 30 is now staying missing as well. That one's gone yeah. where it was there before. So now um, uh, Mika, I can just, um, just to, and, and everybody um, that is, that is um, has joined the session, uh, I'll give you general feedback on that. Um, we have experienced um, some technical issues on Canvas the last couple of days. Um, I did not sleep um, on Tuesday evening because um, some students registered um, late on the course and they had to um, write a, a, a different formal test. Uh, they wrote that on Monday, so I went in on Tuesday just to check and see um, if they did. And obviously I need to um, mark it and get it off to the moderator so uh, the students can get feedback. It wasn't on your course, but um, that was the first time I became aware of it. Um, and it was missing. Uh, the, the three were there uh, that wrote on Monday, but none of the students the other 30 plus that wrote uh, a month ago was on there and I, I was I, I didn't sleep I went where, where did it go um so we um, I went to the first thing on on Wednesday morning I went to the technical um, division um, and we sat down we um we sorted that with canvas um it apparently um I wasn't the only one is this there's a number of um of, um, of similar experiences that um, other lecturers have had in the last couple of days. So it's not that it's it's not, nothing, you're not gonna repeat the test or anything. It's, it's just a question of um, um, technical issues that we um, that we are aware of and that we're sorting out as they pop up basically. It, it was it was a shock to me, but a great relief as well that, um, that um, it's not gone, it's somewhere in cyberspace and, and yeah, they fortunately got it. Um, and I think it was a relief um, more than anything else. So yeah, we are aware of it. It, it does um, um, show sometimes that it's missing. Um, I know that um, it's not a. It, it's it's sometimes because um, it hasn't been published yet, so it's um, it's not available for you to view. But then also, um, I know that um, yeah, I've I've had a personal experience where um, it wasn't that wasn't the case. It was um, it was something else. But um, yeah, Mika, I'm I'm aware of it, but um, there's, there's no alarm. Um, None of you have to be alarmed about about what you see. <laughs> okay, do not um, don't let that affect your um, your your learning process at the moment. You are aware of it, and and we're attending it as it, as it pops up. 
Um, I, I thought I had a similar experience this morning again, and I thought, okay, right, no. Let me go through the steps that they that they showed us yesterday, uh, the um, the help desk, and um, yeah, the problem was sorted. I'm not exactly sure why the, what the origin is and where and how, um, but um, yeah, it's it's been it's been clarified and it's been resolved. <laughs> Right. No, who was that? Don't know, sir. Um, <laughs> so the last question that I wanted to ask is yeah, sure what chapters must we study for our exam? Because we've gone through a lot of chapters, so it's a little bit like overwhelming. Is it kind of everything that we've done so far? We must just study every single chapter or? Um, Miko and, and everybody else, um, the, the correct answer to that question is, um, every single chapter that you have covered will, um, uh, in some form, appear in the in the exam. Um, however, I think you've figured out um, previously with other assessments and other modules, and even during your um, years at school, that the new work obviously is covered um, in in a greater percentage. I, I, to be honest with you, if if you ask me now what the percentage is of new work that was not covered um, in, in the formal test, um, what the percentage is um, that um, um, in, in the exam uh, that, that covers those chapters, uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll have a look, but um, again, as I said, it's all chapters um, obviously need to be prepared. Um, I'm, I'm not, it's not the answer that most of you wanted to hear, but unfortunately, um, yeah, the, the entire curriculum and, and all the learning outcomes are covered with um, over the chapters that we've done, um, and they are all uh, um, evaluated and assessed in in your um, in your exam. Um, when we do the final exam preparation, um, um, I'll go through in greater detail. But I think the the important thing is um, to um, to answer your question or summarize my answer to your question. You have to study all the chapters. Some chapters, um, the newer chapters that you have not um, been assessed on in the formal um, assessment or formal test, um, will obviously um, will obviously be viewed differently because um, we have not assessed you on that work. Um, but there's no chapters that's excluded, um, unfortunately. Um, yeah, that's just the nature of the beast. Okay, thank you. So would you be able to perhaps um, just make a like short list of the chapters that we have done? Because I know we skip some and we have done yes. the chapters before previous chapters and things. So yes. it gets a little bit complicated for us to go back and try and figure out which ones we've done, which ones we haven't. Of course. What I'll, what I'll do is, and we'll discuss that um, when we, when we um, we'll discuss that. So we can discuss it tomorrow. Uh, or we can leave it till next week. Um, what I've done with all the other groups, um, the, the second and the third years have already, um, they've already got their uh, study week next week because they started um, earlier than you in February already. Um, so what I've done for them is we discussed it in class and we agreed that um, an additional uh, revision session, um, a sort of a final exam preparation, um, if everybody uh, agrees to it, um, will be done in the study week. It's not, um, as I said, it's not on your timetable. I just felt, you know what, um, if you if we finish next Friday, then you've got a study week and then you only write your exam um, the following week or the end of the following week, there's a lot of time that um, has lapsed since. And then sometimes um, students obviously are not necessarily in the right, correct mindset for um, this particular module because they're focusing and re um, doing revision on um, on other um, modules that they write um, prior to this one. So um, I'm going to, um, um, with your with the group's consent, I'm going to schedule such a session. We'll discuss tomorrow on exactly what day and date um, in your study week because remember um, there won't be other classes, so it could be any time during the day. I will post an announcement. Um, in the announcement, I will give you a summary of the date, the time, um, duration of the exam, the chapters that are covered, um, and I'll also include um, a different link because that will be in a different session to that specific session, as well as um, an, um, 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 a breakdown of what to expect um, in the exam and the emergency contact numbers that you 
um, via WhatsApp um, phone number as well as um, email should there be any um, technical interventions, um, load shedding, for instance, happening during the time that you're writing your exam. Because um, during your formal test that you wrote, um, during the formal test that was wrote um, in earlier this year, or earlier this semester, you had the entire day available to you to do that. Um, for the exam, um, the decision has been taken by management that um, there are certain time slots. You saw that on your timetable that you received. Um, I think your exam is, um, I know it's on the 30th of June, if I can remember correctly. And I think the time slot is... Um, 28th. 28th. Um, why do I think it's 11 in the morning till 3 o'clock in the afternoon? So there's a four hour window period um, and it's purely for security reasons. Because I mean, if you write your test online this morning um, and you have coffee with your friend at lunch, um, you can discuss the paper and that person might not have written a paper yet. Okay, um, or done the online course yet. So it's purely for that specific reason. Um, I got confirmation from the student council as well because they were part of the discussion and those decisions were reached. So there is a specific time slot. I will include that in the announcement um, to make sure that um, that particular session is set up um, and, and, and that you know where to go to and what to do if all of a sudden there's load shedding. Because we started off with load shedding level two this morning and it became um, level three since eight o'clock. Uh, and who knows what the rest of the day entails. So if, um, um, that, that is the current um, um, agreement. And I just would like it to be formalized in an announcement on, on, um, on Canvas so everybody has access to it. Um, I trust that that um, that we can reach an agreement like that with, uh, with a. I would I, I would feel more comfortable if we if we have a session. That, that's despite the fact that I'm available throughout um, the study week as well as your exam period for um, for um, via email if you want to um, to chat to me with specific issues that you have when you're going through certain chapters and you are battling with certain concepts. Okay, so the. The support from our side, um, from my side, does not cease next Friday when we have a final session. So I wanted to ask, with, with regards to the load shedding, I'm yes. not sure if you've answered this, but um, I just wanted to know, so but what happens if, let's say now you do have load shedding during that time slot, but it's not something you could have prepared yeah. in advance? Because for instance, yeah, you can be in the middle of the day and they can decide to change it from level right. two to level four yes. and then you all of a sudden have load shedding, but now you haven't made arrangements to go and take the test anywhere else and that kind of thing so it is a little bit like stressful i know because i mean that's the last thing that you want to worry when you actually sit down for your for your exam um because i don't have an official um answer that i can give you um with authority um i will check and i'll make sure that when before we have our session next week um, to give you that feedback as to uh, put your mind at ease as what, what exactly to do. Because I know it's fine, there are contact numbers and emails, but now what happens, uh, and you want to know if there's an interruption, how does that affect your um, exam? Is it going to be rescheduled? Are you going to um, do it later in the day when the power's on again? Um, I actually don't know how that's yeah. going to happen, but um, I'll make sure that um, I'll get the information and share it with you as a group um, before we finish our um, um, next week. Okay, thank you, sir. Because you're yeah, like the other day we had eight hours straight yeah. of load shedding, which wasn't meant to happen. Because it wasn't meant to happen. Or they then come back on. They say that well, it's only off between four and six, and they only come back on at eight. So, and, and, and yeah, I know that that those logistical challenges are are enormous. Um, and we are obviously aware of it, um, and I'm pretty sure that management has has a plan in place. But um, I'll make sure that I get that information for you and share it with the entire group. I'll put that in an announcement as well. Then you can go back to it if you've maybe missed the decision um, for whatever reason. Okay. Good. I've, I've decided to do this um, um, chapter, the final chapter, chapter 15. Um, people up to this point um, in, in marketing, we've only dealt with products. Remember we did products the other day and in its prices and, and it's basically the four P's of the marketing mix that we've covered. Um, extensively uh, through individual chapters, but um, how do we how do we market services? Because they are distinctly different. And this chapter, um, the the slideshow is is 38 slides, but 
I've made a very clear distinction um, as to where the curriculum stops. Okay, so they, I've, 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 I haven't deleted all the slides. I wanted to give you the slides for the entire chapter, but it's very clear up to what point you have to study for in, in this particular chapter. Okay, I'll cover that in, in class today, but um, you will very much, uh, you, you'll see um, as well where um, the curriculum stops, um, just to make sure that you um, know what to do from this particular chapter. Right, um, services marketing, it's pretty much how do you market a service? Now, firstly, let's start off, um, we, we, can, we can obviously give you proper definitions, like a service is something that's um, an act or a, a task that's performed and, and not necessarily a product that you can actually buy and take possession of. In, in a nutshell, that's basically what a, what a service is. Um, give me some examples, people, of, of services that are more, um, give me some examples of, of um, businesses that you, um, that you think are services, and we can clarify that because um, that's the, what we're going to do during the session today. Give me a number of examples of some services, please. Any service you can um, think so of? Yes. Maybe like housekeeping. So like you get people from a company, they have workers who come over to your house and just like clean whatever you request. Yes, excellent example. Um, they perform a specific service um, and you pay for it because it's convenient for you. Uh, you maybe, um, and a lot of people do um, um one of my colleagues were um his car was um wrecked yesterday um and he decided um he's not going to buy a new car he's actually going to rent a car every month i mean the installment's going to be slightly cheaper and um yeah he doesn't want to go through that trouble but anyway uh, uh, similarly to that um people do not have the time um they either now or they've made the decision already and said listen if, if i if i if i add up all the cleaning detergents and all the vacuum cleaners and brooms and mops and whatever I need to have, um, you know what, I might as well just um, get somebody in to do that for me on a, on a regular basis. Um, are there other um, possible services you can think of? We'll expose to, um, we'll, I'll expose you to more services as we as, as we progress through the, through the chapter, but um, yeah, um, on the screen you've you've got you've got an example of an airline. I mean, you buy a ticket to fly from Cape Town to Johannesburg, then um, it's a service that's provided by whatever airline you decided to fly on, um, and it's it's not it's not your plane, it's not your airline, and it's not your seat. Uh, you just have a temporary use um, of that specific service that they deliver to get you from Cape Town to Johannesburg. Um, and we'll go into more detail just now to see um, how do we categorize or how um, our services and 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 um, um, and products differ. And based on that, we obviously have to um, modify our marketing strategies accordingly. Now, the five characteristics that um, that is that differentiate services from products, and we'll deal with each of these individually, is um, intangibility, inseparability perishability, heterogeneity, and ownership, or actually the lack of ownership. Um, as I said, we'll deal with that in, individually um, in, 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 in slides to come. Um, I just want to also um, expose you to, and, and some of this is not, um, is, is not um, in your textbook. I added some of it because it will just give us a better um, understanding of this particular subject. Right. What the tangibility spectrum basically means is that products and services um, are different, and the greatest difference is the tangibility um, of products. The fact that a product you can pick up, you can taste it, you can smell it. Um, basically, you can use all your senses to, um, to make a decision if you want that product, if you need to buy that product, which is not um, which is not possible with services. You can't um, um, go to the, a, a doctor or a dentist. That's also a service. Okay, it's performed by a professional, um, at proper training, and they are providing the service of um, attending to your um, to your health. Uh, you can't just go there and say, "Listen, let, doc. I mean, um, let's just do, try this out and see if, how it goes." Or go to the um, to to the hairdresser, which is another example of, um, of 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 a service, and then say, listen, um, do you mind? I'm not sure if I want to actually use your services permanently. Um, so just cut my hair, 
um, I won't pay you for that. Um, and then if I like it, um, I'll return it the next time I'll pay you kind of thing. No, it doesn't work like that. So, um, however, um, the distinction um, to put it into a visual like a diagram that you have on the screen, hopefully um, makes you, um, uh, hopefully helps you to, um, to, to categorize products and services better. Um, on the left hand side of the of the image, we have our pure products. Now that is a desk, a table, a actual item, um, a the phone itself. Not um, Vodacom was providing the service. The phone, um, it's something as I said that you can touch it, can, uh, that you can smell um, and 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 use all your senses to to access to. On the right hand side of the continuum, you've got your pure services. Now. For instance, teaching um, or a, a doctor, for instance. Yes, doctors have tools that they use and teachers have tools that they use, but their skill that they have been taught um, to equip them um, with that particular um, um, or, or to, to equip them as a teacher or a dentist or a doctor or a hairdresser, for instance, um, is is the essence of what um, um, of, of, of um, the task that is performed. They have um, tangible products that they need to use in the process of delivering the service. But um, by definition, the task that they perform is that of a service that um, that you cannot buy off a shelf. Okay, right in the middle. And as I said, we'll, we'll I'm just going to try and, and um, pick for you to get a better picture of, um, of, of what these different categories are. Right in the middle, you find what we call hybrids. Now, a hybrid is um, partially service, partially um, 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 product. It's, for instance, like a restaurant. A restaurant, we go to a restaurant because we get the food prepared and delivered to us and it provides us with that convenience of not having to do that the preparation and the cleaning ourselves but a restaurant without the food that they prepare and sell is not going to um is, is not going to qualify as a service because i mean you know, you're not going to a restaurant and you sit down and there's just tables and chairs and nothing to serve nothing to eat nothing to drink so they need those tangible items, those products, um, the drinks and the food to be able to complete the service that they deliver. Let's look at each of these five characteristics that we've identified that um, expresses the difference between products and services. Well, firstly, is intangibility. Now, intangibility is, is pretty much the service is intangible are predominantly intangible because you cannot, um, you, you, you can only experience it. You cannot buy it. You, can't, you cannot own it. You cannot feel and touch it. Okay. Um, I've used the images on the screen because the way in which you um, measure um, the quality of a service um, depends on the credibility of the service and I think the images on the two images on the left hand side of the screen a couple of years ago the South African rugby team the Springboks were in dire straits nobody even wanted to talk to them people were actually burning their jerseys um, they weren't performing well and then a particular you know, structure was put in place by certain individuals uh, the end result was we won the World Cup in 2019 um, and currently our world champions and the credibility of the brand um, has definitely um, 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 resulted in in us experiencing them, um, uh, us having a better, uh, the general population having a, a more positive attitude towards them. So um, the opposite was true um, for, for Steinoff and um, the people involved there. A lot of people lost a lot of money. So um, the credibility of, of, of the company and the individuals involved are not great. Um, and, and if they rated this, that particular service, it would probably not be very high at the moment um, because of the experience that people had. If we look at the second um, um, characteristic, it's, by, by, um, it's inseparability, and it's quite simply what it says. 
you cannot go to the doctor. You, I can't send somebody else to the doctor if I'm sick. You know what? I don't feel well, but go to the doctor and let him um, examine you and see what's wrong with me. No, you have to be there. So in other words, the insep inseparability refers to the customer who wants and needs the service, as well as the service provider who's delivering the service, must both be present for the service to actually happen. You can't send somebody else to, to the hairdresser to have your hair cut. Um, if that person goes, they will cut that person's hair. Okay, so if you go to um, if you go to a, um, a rock concert, and I think we've all um, have m maybe have missed that um, privilege because um, I, I quite enjoyed it and every single opportunity that was offered here in Cape Town Stadium for for um, visit when when live bands visited, I was I was left, right, and centre. Um, I'm very much enjoy my music, and um, if I go to a show like that, I pay through compu ticket or whoever. Um, a certain amount of money, which gives me access to the, um, the um, to that particular show. Uh, I can enjoy it. Um, the experience is what I take home. I cannot take the band home. If I want to listen to the music again, I've got to download it. Okay, it's as simple as that. Okay. So inseparability, both the customer who's receiving the service and the provider who's delivering the service needs to be there. In other words, the consumption and the production happens at the same time. Perishability. Perishability refers to the fact that um, you um, cannot store the product um, or the service like you would do with products. If there's a special on, um, I was running very low on coffee this morning, and then fortunately, when I opened the newspaper, I saw that there's a there's a buy one get one free, or buy two and get a third free type of type of um, special um, offer. Uh, I think it's pick and pay on, um, on or checkers. I'm not exactly sure. I can go and I can buy all those and I can store it. I don't have to open all three and use it. I can use them as um, I, um, obviously if it remains within the expiry date. I can store what, um, products if I see specials. You cannot do that with a service. You cannot store. You cannot um, book a flight to go from flight from Cape Town to Johannesburg on Friday evening, tomorrow evening, um, and coming back on Sunday evening, and then decide, you know what, you know, I'm really in the mood to go to Johannesburg this week. I'll, I'll use it next week. No, once that plane is taken off, your opportunity is gone. You, you've missed your flight. You've got to buy another one if you want to go next week. So you cannot store it and use it whenever you feel. Um, you have a need for it. Okay, everybody clear on the store. That's why you see sometimes um, um, when when restaurants when they, when they go into um, into quieter periods. I know especially in in Cape Town, which um, certain restaurants in 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 the waterfront are very popular um, over the summertime because there's a lot of tourists and and obviously during winter they're not as um, as um, as well visited by by tourists or by um, by locals even. And then they offer a great deal of specials. They want to you to actually, obviously, they want um, to use, um, um, they want to customers during the, the slower, um, during the slow season, for, um, and and that's where you find a lot of specials. Um, it's very seasonal in in that regard. So perishability refers to the fact that you cannot store those services. They have deadlines. They have specific time. If you have booked. Uh, appointment with a hairdresser for three this afternoon. You you can cancel it, yes, but then you haven't received the service either. Just remember that. But if you um, if you have an appointment, you've made an appointment. Your opportunity is gone once that um, time has lapsed. We also have heterogeneity, and heterogeneity um, is is specifically um, with products. Um, it's quite simple. You buy something, you use it, you're satisfied, and you're a happy customer. Or you buy it, and you store it, and you use it later. Um, and there's not a lot of human interaction. The only interaction is between you, the customer, and you buying the product. Um, but you're not evaluating the quality of the product based on that individual who sold it to you um, at the at the checkout point. In the service, it's it's a bit different because there's a, um, 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 a great deal of human involvement. Um, the garden services, the house cleaning services, those people need to be there for the service to actually happen. Um, and people um, 
tire the long um later in the day they won't be as sharp as they were um, early in the day i mean most of us are like that because you're tired if you have a hard day a doctor i'm not suggesting that doctors um, late in the day, the doctors are not as professional as they were in the morning, but they, to a certain extent, the, the, the possibility of them making mistakes are so much greater because um, they've already um, worked for a full day. And that's why, why I'm almost always concerned if, um, and while I was in hospital in January, I, um, I, I could hear the nurses say, I mean, she's so tired. He's worked for three days non-stop kind of thing because they were short staff based on um, because of, of, of COVID and everything. And um, you start making mistakes. Um, little detail and things um, um, get, um, is missed. And that's the quality of the service, therefore, is not going to be the same every single time. If you go to a restaurant and you had a great time um, and you go back, um, the chances that you'll have exactly the same experience again is um or there's a possibility that you won't experience it the same again because there might be a different shift on on um, um in the kitchen on that evening there might be different waiters and waitresses helping uh, and maybe as a result of the, those individuals involvement the previous experience was great the chef was actually um, on his a game um and he prepared the food properly the the, the waiter and waitresses they were really very really friendly and nice um so that uh, assisted to you experiencing a good um a good service the possibility because we, um we work with humans um the, the possibility that the quality is not going to be the same every single time is very high no problem at all thank you very much for letting me know I'm just um, taking a break to read some of the chats. Um, unfortunately, I can't um, accommodate all your requests, um, like, for instance, the questions that we're going to get in the exam. Um, I've included on all these slides some, some videos that you can watch, some short video clips. Um, obviously, um, in this particular case, because we're doing, dealing with, um, um, with a different quality of service, um, it's quite funny. Um, I think the one video is an example of um, what good sh good service um, should be, and the other one is obviously um, a few funnies about what bad service actually is. The final um, aspect that we, um, the final component or characteristic that differentiates between products and services um, is the ownership or the lack of ownership. You buy a ticket to fly, and as I said earlier on, that plane, um, or airline, or even that seat that you sit in, or the cabin crew and the pilot, you don't own them. You only have um, limited use for the duration of the flight of that particular service. Similarly, when you go to a restaurant, it's not your restaurant, it's not your chef, it's not your um, food. You only pay for what you have experienced and used during the time that you were there. Similarly with any other service. Right, um, ownership, products, you buy something, it's yours. You buy a, um, a can of cool drink, it's yours. You can drink it and then your the, the thirst is gone or you can actually give it to somebody else or you can sell it to somebody else. You can't do that with a service. Um, you can't do that with a service, unfortunately. Right. Any questions at this point before we um, finish the last part of this chapter? Sir? Yes, um, sure. Um, this has not got to do with any of the chapters, but on the on the calendar it said um, part four assignment. Is that a mistake? On the, um, on campus it says, just repeat it, it please. Yeah, on the calendar, it says something about part four of the assignment. No, that is a mistake. Yeah, you've, you, you, there is no additional assignment. The one that you handed in actually had um, had um, separate parts, and we um, um, realized that we're going to have problems uh, if we submit them on four different occasions or three different occasions. Okay. And that's why we've decided, yeah, the assignment that you handed in last week um, was was the only assignment there's no there's no other one just to avoid um any confusion i'll just remove that from from the canon page okay thank you sir sure no problem 
Anything else? Anybody clear about what services are and how services are different from um, from um, products? Any examples that you want to maybe run past me and say, listen, I'm not sure if, or, or, or give me other examples of services that you have, that you use. Every single one of you use a form of service every day. Share with me. I'd like a number of examples. None of that that I've used. I know that you have your haircut. I know that you are seeking go to doctors. Any other examples that you can think of? Please, I just want to make sure. Yes. If you go play pipes. Sorry, Danica, I mean, it sort of broke up and then just repeat that, please. No, so I was saying if you go play pot pipes, like miniature golf yes, or yes. something, yes. wouldn't that be a it's a service that they provide, yes. Um, this is, they, they're in a particular business where um, people don't rock up there with equipment. Um, it's it's more sort of a, you almost find it as a hybrid service. Um, they um, they have to have a layout and a, and, and a few um, courses for you to play, and they need to have balls and, um, and, um, and, and um, putters for you to use. Um, but... You pay in exchange for that, so that means that they are performing that particular task of ensuring that the course is ready and that the equipment is there for you to uh, to use. Yes, that is an example. Yeah. Anybody uh, else? So yep. when you go to the garage to fill up, what do you think? A garage to fill up, Neilan, to fill up your your petrol tank. That's a. I don't think it's called a service station for nothing in some parts of the world. You're quite right. It actually, uh, although in 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 um, although you have your in just remember that yeah. just remember that services sometimes have a self help option too. Mm. Like in in America, um, uh, you, you basically rock up to a service station to fill your tank up. You do it yourself, and then you go inside and pay, or you just swipe your card. I mean, um, in, in South Africa, we still have, um, and most parts of the world, we still have. Uh, people, attendants who actually perform that task, but yes, that is an example of a service. Your delivery services, you don't have to go um, get in your car and drive to um, to Debonair's to pick up your pizzas that you've ordered. They can they deliver it to your door. Um, these are all examples of services that um, that is performed by a company to um, to um, add to the convenience of the customer. And very often it's used as a differentiating factor between business A and business B. Uh, and people sometimes choose that one that has that extra service. Um, and um, yeah, but um, no, that's good examples that you've, that you've shared so far. Right, let's look at um, a very important, um, um, a very important aspect that we have to re- also um, um, calculate um, in to how services are performed um, as opposed to how uh, or how marketing is performed where services are involved as opposed to where we are just um, selling a tangible product, something that has been produced that's on the shelf that you can buy and use or store and use later. Um, the marketing mix, when you are marketing products, are the four that we've dealt with so far in the course. Product, price, place, and promotion. Now, the extra three Ps are involved when you are marketing services. We'll quickly have a look at each of them individually, but the three extra Ps to the marketing mix are people, processes, and physical evidence. Right, let's look at physical evidence first because it's much easier for us to because we can see it. Um, physical evidence has to do with what they call service escape, and that is the physical environment um, um, of where the service is performed. If you're going to a, um, a, a dentist or a doctor and it's a very dodgy location, um, it's an unsafe area and there's limited parking, um, the lighting is not very good. Um, um, it's always crowded in the reception room, and it's not a, lot of, not a place for people to sit and wait. Um, that all contributes to your service experience, and all those physical um, attributes contribute to um, um, the quality of the service that's delivered. Um, 
I've chosen a very good example. You can have a look if nobody um, has seen that video clip. It's a very short video clip on Google and their head office and what it looks like. Just for the sake of you not going to use that um, um, that option to watch the video, I've included some some slides. Uh, those are all images that um, of what the head office of Google looks like and why Google has been rated as the company in the world that most people would prefer to work um, would prefer to work at. And the reason for that being is that if you look at those images, that's what your work environment looks like. You don't want to go home. You just want to stay at work. And I know that um, um, yeah, they are very functional. Um, I've had the fortune to be um, not at this specific head office, but to be to one of the um, regional offices in in America. Um, it's it's jaw dropping. I have to admit, it, everything you see on the screen is is there, and it's you don't pay for food. You don't. I mean, you there's 24 seven when the place is open. There's always food available, hot and cold beverages all included. I tell you what, I know some of you, and it includes me, if I work in an environment like that, I'll, I'll, I'll be tempted not to go home. Um, but anyway, just to share with that, because that gives you an idea of how the physical evidence that um, I've listed uh, in that particular diagram as well, the service escapes, for instance, um, the signage, the, the, the landscaping around the building, uh, the parking that, and um, everything adds to your um, experiencing a service. So that's a, a, a very important component that is not necessarily required for, um, for a product, but definitely for services, because people are going to rate them on the experience and not how the product tasted. Okay. Um, there's others that you can add. Um, it's been used in the images I've used. Um, I haven't been to that um, lodge in the Eastern Cape. Um, it's rather exclusive. Um, I think it's 9,000 Rand per person per night. Um, you see the big five um, and all the luxuries that you can think of is, is there and obviously everything is included. The image, um, second to the right, um, that um, is from my visit to the UK. That's what one of the food um, layouts um, um, at Harrods in London, in Knightsbridge in London, looks like. Um, the experience itself. It's, you sometimes walk away and you haven't bought anything, but wow, you've experienced something. Um, also, your delivery trucks. It's, it's been very effectively used to, um, to market nowadays. Um, um, I'm not sure which one, which company came up with that first, but usually, I mean, if they, if you're going to look, you know, you can see there's a pick and pay truck driving, there's a checkers truck driving. I like the Woolies trucks. That's why I've used that example of the Woolies delivery truck because um, they always have a nice message and just uh, enhancing the fact that they are very much involved in the environment. But all these physical attributes and tangible attributes um, adds to your experience um, of a service. Then the process is involved pretty much refer to the actual processes and, and mechanisms and, and um, um, that that is used and that's necessary for the service to be performed. If you are sick, you can't just go to the doctor because you will be in the waiting room until you find a gap. Usually the procedure is you pick up the phone, um, you make an appointment, you get in your car, you travel there, you wait and the doctor attends to you. There's a specific procedure and order in which things happen. Now, some procedures um, um, are, are simpler. Um, some processes are much simpler, um, like a garden service, for instance. But um, obviously, um, managing a service like a hospital, for instance, is, is just a bit more um, complex. Okay, that's why I've used those two particular examples. And then finally, the most important aspect that makes everything work, which gives you all the pleasure, but gives you um, also the, all the headaches is that of the people involved. And here we refer to the customers as well as the employees that work for, um, um, for the service provider. Because you have different 
um, you have people who have different designations um, that, um, but all of that is necessary um, to, for the service to be delivered. Actually, somebody that has to be there to perform the service, a doctor is not going to take his own appointments and he's also going to um, attend to the patients. They, he needs an admin person and a receptionist to actually take the calls and make the, um, um, make the, um, um, the appointments because the doctor's not going to interrupt his, um, his um, examination of a patient to answer his phone to make an appointment for somebody who's sick that, will, that needs an appointment later in the day. Um, so there's a certain procedure uh, that's followed, but also um, people need to perform these procedures for the service to actually, um, for the service to actually um, be delivered. Um, anybody, any um, examples that you want to share? Um, are these three P's that we've added to the marketing mix, are they clear to you um, where they fit in and, and actually what they each mean? Can you understand the roles that each of these extra three P's play in the service um, or in the, in the process of marketing a service? Yes, sir. Everybody clear? Yes, sir. Were you very sure? People, as I indicated to you, the, there's 20 more slides left um, in this particular chapter, but um, they are not um, in the curriculum for this year, and they are not um, to be uh, prepared for the exam. This is where this particular chapter finishes for um, for you as a group. Okay, and please don't be like that. Um, don't just go and lie on your back and hope that the information will come to you. Okay, you have to unfortunately sometimes pick up that book and go through the process of opening it and um, then studying as well. Okay. It's a pleasure, George, all the time. Um, any questions, so anybody? Yes. Last chapter completely, or are we still having more chapters? I think um, if memory serves me correctly, we still have to do, um, um, we still have to attend to pricing, um, how to price a product and um, different pricing strategies. Um, I think that's also part of the, um, of, of, the of the day session uh, of, of this week's um, um, program. Um, yeah, I don't think we've done pricing. I pretty much, I'm pretty sure we haven't done pricing. Okay, thank you, sir. The In other words, Excuse me? The subject has so many chapters, like double every other module. I know. <laughs> so I, I know. Um, and that's why I think it's it's important once, uh, once we've completed everything to just tie all the loose ends and, um, and, and try and pick up a storyline that links all these chapters. And that's what I'm going to attempt to do next Thursday. When we actually have our, um, um, when we have completed the um, the curriculum, so at this point, yes, the chapters that should be done, um, and I will confirm that in in, in writing, so we have um, evidence to check up on. Um, chapter one, we did the overview of marketing. We also had chapter two, the um, analyzing the external environment. Chapter three, we looked at um, how um, how consumers behave and how make this, they make decisions. We also had a look at the competitors, also part of your market environment, which you cannot con 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 control, but need to be aware of and the impact it might have on, on your business. Um, that's chapter four. We did not do chapter five. We did chapter six, which was segmentation and targeting, and chapter seven, which was positioning. We did chapter eight, which is products. Um, Chapter nine we did last week was the development uh, the developing new products. Um, chapter ten dealt with distribution or alternatively called marketing channels, um, and we also did marketing communication. Um, how you use all the different mark, um, 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 all the different components of communicating to your customers, um, advertising, publicity, public relations. So I'm going to prepare a slideshow for you for next week, which will 
draw this storyline and not specifically just focus on one chapter, but to see and give you a clearer picture of how all these chapters um, are linked um, and how they fit into the, the bigger picture um, of business marketing. Or to get you, basically to give you a, a proper overview of what business marketing is and where everything fits in. So it makes sense to you and you don't just see it as, as separate individual chapters. Um, and obviously, we um, also have done um, today chapter 15 or that section of chapter 15 that deals with um, the marketing of services. Everybody good at this stage? You all fine? Any questions, anybody? Anything you want to share? Anything that you're concerned about? Anything that, apart from, I, I, I'm not a medical doctor. I cannot take your anxiety away. Um, I can just um, provide you with some advice, and that is to keep any changes to the minimum. Try and focus on the things that you can control, um, and let us and other people um, who are in a position to make those decisions that can impact on you directly or indirectly, like um, the impact that um, load shedding will have on examination and what happens in the process, just to, um, we'll provide you with information to, to um, hopefully um, reduce your levels of anxiety because any exam is stressful. Nobody can say that, I know what exam is easy, I like that. Um, no. It's the uncertainty. It's the uncertainty. Uh, it's similar to, yes, we're in stage three load shedding now, but we are unsure if it's going to be upgraded to level four by two o'clock this afternoon, because we, we cannot plan properly if we don't know these future changes. Similarly with your exam, you don't know what questions they're going to ask you and, and from what chapters and in what way is it going to be done. It's also your anxiety is, um, is, is as a result of you, of the uncertainty of what you expect. So that is what um, um, my main objective is for the remaining sessions that we're going to have to get you into a, into a mindset that um, allows you to be more relaxed um, and well prepared. Uh, unfortunately, the actual studying you still have to do yourself. Um, I can't help you with that. You have to still put in the hours. You cannot lie on the, your back and hope for the information to come to you. Um, unfortunately, um, yeah, that part of that part of the process I can't get I can't get involved in as well. Um, anybody at this point, anything else that you maybe want to add, maybe want to ask before we finish for this for for today? So I have a question that's a bit off topic. Yes, Jessica. Bach and Janika, sorry. Um, I just wanted to know more about the follow-up calls after the exam. The follow-up after the exam, the process after after you've completed your exam. I mean, when you get your results and stuff like that. No, I saw on the timetable they said that we should expect phone calls. Oh, yes. Um, that's just just a measure they put in place to ensure that um people are actually not um, helping each other because you can sit on, on two laptops next to each other and actually complete the same exam and then also collaborate in that regard. So it's just a, um, in other words, basically you have to be available for the full four hours, although you're only going to occupy three of those hours yourself. Okay. It's going to be, and it's going to be done randomly. I've, um, I, when you got the instructions about the, those arrangements, um, we as, as, as lecturers um, received it um, simultaneously as well so um anything and obviously as we go uh, as we talk I'm, I'm making notes of um danica of, of questions that have been asked and um i'll make sure that uh, i get 100 percent clarity so i can um ensure that um you have a group a, the best understanding of what um exactly will entail okay thank you so much sir. thanks for asking that question Anybody else? Anything else you're unsure of? Uh, please, I mean, if, if something pops up, don't hesitate. Um, if something um, comes to mind later in the day or whatever, um, please, uh, 
write it down and remember if you if you're unsure if you're gonna forget it and then ask me next time okay so are you allowed to give um past papers to us to practice or not no that was it was um a question that was asked in other classes as well um i pretty sure it was asked by various students um in in various faculties because um it's almost as if within that day or two that these questions popped up um in class um a email came from management to say no no old exam papers um are to be shared with students so may i ask how come because obviously that's our only way of really practicing how the exams will be asked because coming from high school to uni things do get no. asked and so why are we not allowed to practice um mika i'm not 100 percent sure um i'm not going to guess how that decision was taken um i cannot ever say that um the format of questioning in your class test and your formal um, test that you've written is the format that um, obviously um, you can familiarize yourself with because that's how it's going to repeat in future as well in, in other exams. Uh, and it's different for each um, um, module, obviously. Accounting is, is a different, um, the structure of accounting paper is going to be different. Um, but um, part, I think, of the reason why it was taken is because um, curriculums change and textbooks change. Um, so, yeah, the basic concepts remain the same, but um, curriculums change. It's revised on a on a on a um, cyclical basis, like I think they do with um, in schools as well. Um, every five years or so, I think there's a change in the um, in the moderator um, who obviously um, and assessors who set the papers and the processes so that's 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 something that happens continuously in in education so um i'm not sure if that was part of the reasoning but um i'll just ask somebody if they know because um obviously i don't um they must have had some good reasons to to make that decision but again it's another question that i will um have jotted down that i will follow up with you Thank you. Sure. Guys, thanks. I had fun this morning. Um, unfortunately, I have to rush off to another class. Um, if you don't mind, um, I'll stop the recording now and uh, I'll attend to the questions that you've um, that you've asked. I'll ask the right people um, and 